Hi, so it's Dr. Fox, licensed psychologist in the state of Texas. And in this video, what I want to talk about is relationships for those with BPD. And I think relationships are so critical and particularly how relationships are not just with two people, but really three, right? And it's important to know that with BPD, there's actually six of the criteria relate to relationships, right? That first one is frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment. There's also unstable and intense interpersonal relationships, and there's unstable self-image or sense of self. There's also impulsivity in at least two areas that are self-damaging, right? Which could be uh, promiscuity, which could be substance abuse, reckless driving, binge eating, and those can impact relationships as well. And then there's affective instability, right? Due to marked reactivity of mood, you know, so feeling really high or feeling really low, not high like drug high, right? Just feeling like really expansive mood, intense high mood, like almost hypomanic or manic-like mood. And then inappropriate intense anger or difficulty controlling anger. Now, when we look at relationships and we know that these six factors relate to relationships, it's so important though, when we talk about our sense of selves and where we are in relationships. So there's us, there's our partner or significant other or the individual that we are in the relationship with. Could be a coworker, could be a friend, but as you can tell from this animation, right, we're talking about particularly romantic relationships. And what happens is, is that there's you, there's the other, and then there's the combination of both. And it's the relationship. That center person is the relationship. And one of the struggles that individuals with BPD have is not only related to the six factors, right, the six criteria that we just talked about, but also keeping a sense of themselves in the relationship. And you can imagine, right, that abandonment issues are directly related, unstable self-image directly related, that impulsivity, that self-damaging behavior directly related to relationships, affective instability, inappropriate intense anger, controlling anger, these are all factors that impact relationships adversely. So we have to look at not only does it affect you, but it affects that combination of you and the other that create the relationship persona or person. And I think that recognizing this is so critical. You have to keep a concept of yourself. You have to keep you know, uh, boundaries and understanding of who you are. And I know this is tough for folks with BPD because of that unstable self-image, because of that uncertainty. And a lot of times there is a tendency for individuals along that BPD spectrum to try to blend in with their partner, to try to fit to what their partner wants or they perceive that they need. And when I say they perceive, I mean the individual BPD perceiving what their partner needs. Because a lot of times I think they're afraid to ask. And part of that fear is, well, I'll just kind of, not assume, but I'll try to expect what they want and I'll be what I believe they want. And what happens is that it creates that middle, that couple person really in a distorted manner that becomes really problematic. And that distortion and those problems intensify the six factors, right, that we just talked about. So how do we deal with it, right? How can we manage this? I think first and foremost, it's important for you to get a good concept of who you are. Big, big question, and I understand that, and that can be really tough. But I think understanding who we are, this can go to a really basic level, which is what do you like? Don't worry about other people's opinions, and that can be really hard. But what do you like? What is important to you, right? What about touch? What kind of touch are you comfortable with? What kind of touch are you uncomfortable with? What kind of tone, when someone speaks to you, are you comfortable with? What kind of words are you comfortable hearing and not comfortable hearing? Knowing these things is critical because I think it helps to provide a foundation for where you can fit in that relationship. And the goal is, and I, th I think again, that, that that is a great place to start building your sense of self-concept, building your sense of understanding, identifying your, your core concept, you know, and getting an idea of what that is so that you can learn how to manage it 
as best you can so it doesn't adversely impact that relationship but also your life and how you live it on your own because i think in healthy relationships there's you there's your partner or significant other and then there's the combination of both and i think for that combination of both to be healthy right and to be successful is for both individuals to have a good concept of self and to know what their boundaries are, to know what their likes are, to know what their dislikes are, and to know about interaction patterns that help make the best couple that you can be. But I think that knowing who we are and where we are in the relationship is a critical, critical factor. So please leave comments on what kind of things you do in relationships that help foster that healthy couplehood and what kind of suggestions would you give someone who maybe is struggling with this that'd be really great to see in the comments because i think the comments are really helpful for a lot of folks so i and i appreciate everybody putting out positive and encouraging comments because bpd is really hard to deal with particularly as it relates to relationships so thanks for your time please like share and subscribe and support the channel that would be terrific and i wish you all the best thank you and take care Bye-bye.